spring in this land Labrador. Hello everybody and welcome to my four boys and an animal girl podcast. My name is Patty. I am coming to you from the extreme east coast of Canada on the island of Newfoundland in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. I live just outside St. John's, the capital of the province, and I am located at almost the most easterly point in North America, which is kind of cool. This, the podcast today is going to be about knitting. Uh, this will be I, my regular knitting podcast that I'm hoping to tape once a week now, and uh, the next videotaping that I do will be all about cross-stitch. I'm also going to be doing some sewing and some other things coming up soon, so you'll be seeing some of the other crafty goodness that I get into. But one of the things that I'm doing right now is cleaning my craft room. My friends, Catherine and Siobhan, hi ladies, in Ireland are going to be very pleased to hear that because last year I had made a big sweep of the office area of our basement in preparation for their arrival to stay with us for a week. And but I never made it to the craft room. And to be honest, the office area has built up again and the craft area is still a disaster and I really want to use that space. I'm also going to be preparing for an Etsy market on the 11th of May with my cross stitch business and I need to get some things, some kits put together and some things sewn for that. And instead of trying to haul everything upstairs and work on it and then haul it all back downstairs when the kids get home from school, I decided I would get that space ready so that I could make it into a usable space and use it. <laughs> so it's quite a bit of work. Um, I've already gotten two garbage bags full, three recycling bags full of paper, um, three boxes, and two large bags for recycling, or sorry, for donations. So there are some other things leaving the house, which uh, my husband is eternally grateful for, and it's allowing me some more space in my, uh, in my craft room. I think I'm going to be gradually going through things and getting rid of things as I start to use the space more. Uh, but right now I'm still at the gutting stage and the cleaning and tidying away stage, and I'm excited. I'll be excited to show you the finished product. I did take embarrassingly horrible pictures of the space as it was uh, so you can see a before and after and i'll hope to show you those to do a reveal in the next few weeks so i want to show you a little bit of the knitting i haven't knit a whole lot this week but i have knit a little and i've been working on my snow melt shawl which is housed in my sandy by the lakeside knitting tote this is a project that i I need to look on Ravelry and see what year I started it, but I started it when it came out as a mystery knit along, not last spring. I don't think it was the spring before. I think it may have been the spring before that. And actually, if I look at Helen's pattern here, I wonder is there a year on it? There might not be. Mm -hmm. Copyright Helen. So this is the snow melt shawl is by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And it's a gorgeous shawl. It's my kind of my first big foray into lace. Nope, can't see a date. So anyway, I know it's at least two, if not three years old. I am now 85% finished the shawl. One of the nice things about Helen's patterns is that she writes them in line by line, so row by row format, and then gives you a percentage of how far along you are, which is good because right now I'm knitting over 500 stitches a row which means it's taking me a long time to finish a row. And it's nice to know, to see that percentage system come up reasonably quickly so you feel like you're accomplishing something. So right at the moment, I've broken off with the Ancient Arts Lapis Lazuli. I'm finished with that. I'm still working on the Ancient Arts... What is that one called? I cannot remember. Let's see. Do I have it here? Yes, this is Stargazer. And then I have that paired with Critchum Handmade Sputterf Birds and Butterflies colorway, which is gorgeous. This is going to be the final yarn in the shawl. So I'll be adding that in, in I think five or six more rows. Just confirming the, the name. Birds and Butterflies. It's on SS of Critchum Handmade's um, Rosano Socks. And I'm hoping I'm going to have a little bit left over so I can add it to a scrap blanket if someday I ever get into that. 
I think I will. I really like Skinanigans um, Northeasterly blankets, so I may get started on one of those. So here, it's it's all still on a needle, so it's kind of hard to show because it's on the needles. But here is the shawl. And I had a progress keeper to show you. Now, I realize it doesn't look like I've done much from this point down. But remember, there's over 500 rows. So it's still a fair bit of knitting. I think one of the reasons I've been struggling with this, well, there's two reasons. One is that I'm not very confident knitting lace. And two is that I am a perfectionist. And I've had to let go of both with this project. Essentially, right now, I'm knitting this to get it finished. So I have mistakes. Everything is not adding up right. The lace is probably going to be slightly off-center or not perfect when I'm finished. And I've decided I'm going to accept that because I'm not, I want to get it finished. And I think it's still going to be a lovely, lovely shawl. I don't think very many people are going to notice the mistakes. And if they do, well, that's all I can do. But I really want to get it finished and enjoy the shawl rather than be too intimidated to finish it because I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake and I can't fix it. So that's the point I am at right now for my uh, the snow melt shawl. The other piece I've been knitting on that I showed you is housed in my cottage my cottage number nine bag this is the one that is a drawstring then you hold the handles it's just a gorgeous bag and there's a nice robin not like our american robins here because in newfoundland we still get the american robins this is a nice uh european robin i guess are they european robins are they I'm not sure what kind of robins they're called anyway I am knitting this out of Mrs. Tiggle, Tiggy Winkle is the name of the colorway. This is a elm tree yarn. I'll put the information on the screen, an elm tree yarn, a DK weight yarn. And I'm knitting the, I don't have the pattern here. I think it's the June grass pullover and I'll Put that information on the screen so what i've done is i've almost reached the point where i'm supposed to be to cast separate for the sleeves but it seemed too short and i think you'll agree it is too short yet to cast off so i put it on needles uh sorry took it off the needles and have it on scrap scrap yarn and i'm going to oh, can you see the sparkle in this it's a gorgeous sparkle uh, I'm going to, I need to knit probably two or three more inches, so quite a bit more, not quite a bit, but a fair bit more than the pattern I called for. So I don't know if I'm misreading the pattern or probably is what's happening. So I'm going to get that back on the needle so I can get to work on that. I'm really enjoying, that's a nice, um, you know, kind of easy because it's all stockinette stitch, so it's a pretty easy knit. And I really, that's probably about all my brain can cope with right now. I have a little bit of haul to show you. I'm just glancing at the clock. I've got enough time today for a change. My middle son had dental surgery this morning, so we've been busy with that. And then once I finish uh, taping this little video, I'm going to go back to my craft room and do some more cleaning. So last week, I did go down to Cast On Cast Off, uh, which is one of my local yarn stores. And I had been given a gift certificate for Cast On Cast Off that I used. Is, that was one of my Christmas gifts along with my field, fringe field bag, supply company bag. So I picked up, this is a new yarn to me. It's a Made in Canada yarn. Really, really pretty colors. Uh, the yarn company is called Yarn Indulgences. Always unique and often one of a kind. And I am going to, my plan with this is to knit Hohi Locatelli's hipster shawl. That's what I'm planning. This is a worsted weight in the colorway is sugar plum. And this is an MCN worsted. So it's 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. I thought that would feel really nice against my skin. And I have a confession to make. The most recent shawl that I had finished, which was kind of a pink color in a worsted weight. And I still have one skein of it left. I knit a hat out of it to match. I have lost that shawl. I think I've lost it permanently. I believe I may have lost, I think I lost it outside the house one day when I was out shopping and I don't know where I left it, but it's gone. 
So I'm trying not to think about it too much and get too upset. And I'm hoping that the hipster shawl there in that will still go nicely with the hat. And uh, let's not think about that shawl too much. <laughs> but I wanted to let you know what happened with that shawl. So upsetting. Before I go, I have, uh, I'm going to have a little giveaway. I haven't done a giveaway, a knitting giveaway in quite some time. This is some of my stash yarn, so it has been aging for a while. There's two skeins of it, though I only have one skein to show you right now. It's a Malabrigo yarn in lace weight, and I think I have mentioned that I doubt I'm ever going to knit a whole lot of lace, anything in lace weight yarn, and that I have had this in my stash, like I said, for quite a while, and I don't see using it any time in the near future, and I thought this would be a lovely present for somebody who enjoys lace weight yarn and would like to knit some something. So this is 100% baby merino wool. There's 470 yards in each skein. So that's over 900 yards that you'll get with these two because I'm going to give away both of the skeins that I have. Um, the color is Mariposa 125. No, um, I think that's the color. And as I said, it's Baby Marina, so it is a single ply. It is a gorgeous yarn. Now, I'm sorry, this one I had taken out, and I'm not very good about re gaining you know twisting it up again hopefully you can see I don't know it's kind of washing out a bit but it's yellows and grays and greens kind of all of pale pale spring tones and it is soft like butter it is a gorgeous so I know I'm supposed to twist it like this and then I think I put my chin in it and I let it go up like that. But see, I never get it as good as the, uh, those yarn dyers. They know how to do that. So if you're interested in that yarn, I'll send it anywhere in the world. And all you need to do is comment and tell me what knitting project you're working on right now. Or actually, tell me what knitting project is challenging you right now. Like my snow melt shawl is challenging me. Maybe there's something that's challenging you. So uh, don't write giveaway in the comments um i'll get you to comment here on youtube and yeah and then i'll do a drawing next week for that for those skeins of yarn so hopefully you like those that's something that you're interested in and if you don't like lace weight you could always uh hold the two with the two skeins because they're both the same dye lot you could hold the same two together to make a fingering weight yarn and do something with that as well so I am going to put in a brief video now to show you the item that I was talking about, mentioned last week that I was very excited about that was somewhat knitting related, that uh, is a new something that came to my house. So I'm going to insert that video here. So one of the things I wanted to really show you today is not so much about knitting, but it is about knitting history. This is a rocking chair that my grandmother owned. It was made for her by one of my uncles, my Uncle Tobe, who is married to my Aunt Susie, who is my mother's sister, oldest sister. Though you'd never know what to look at her. <laughs> the women in my mom's family and the men age very well. So this is a rocking chair I remember sitting in every time that I went to visit my grandmother because I love rocking chairs. And I'm so pleased to have this in our home. So the, I've got a quilt over it. The cushions that are on it right now are original, but as you can probably tell, they're quite faded. And the foam is old, so I'll eventually be making new cushions, but this is fine for now. This will be just fine for now. Still very usable. And it's my grandmother. I think my mom may have started I don't know who's tried to teach me how to knit first, my grandmother or my mother. I know my grandmother definitely taught me how to crochet because my mother doesn't know how. But this is a really tangible link to her. Her, mother, her name was Kathleen, which is my middle name. And she was a very, very special woman and very, very special to me and to her other grandchildren. But I always felt like we had an extra special connection. And now I have the rocking chair that Uncle Tobe made for her 
that I, and I've been dying for one of the, these chairs. I actually, years and years ago when Uncle Toad made these, got the pattern for the rocking chair in hopes that my husband and I, because we had at that point, we're doing some woodworking, in hopes that we would eventually build one and we never got around to it. And now I have this chair, so I'm really happy about that. There you go. That's my exciting knitting news for today. So I really hope you enjoyed that. I am so excited to have that piece of this piece of furniture, or that piece of furniture, because it's right next to me here in our house. It's a beautifully comfortable rocking chair. It has holds so many memories for me of my grandmother and grandfather and their house and growing up with them. And so it's a very special piece, and I'm really, really lucky and thankful to have it. So I'm going to head off. I hope everybody's having a wonderful start to their week because it's Monday, April 8th, if I haven't mentioned that already. And I hope you get some time this week to craft something that makes your heart happy. Take care. Bye-bye.